Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be solving an interesting equation with complex numbers. We have 1 plus i to the nth power and 1 minus i to the nth power and they are equal. What do you think we're going to solve for? i? No, i is a constant. i is the number whose square equals negative 1, remember? If you're new to complex numbers, go ahead and check out my lecture videos where I go over basics of complex numbers. A lot of times when people see an equation like this, they think of integers. In the case of complex numbers, probably positive integers. So do you think n should be a positive integer? Well, we're going to solve for n. Let's find out. So I can kind of talk about two main approaches here. First, we're going to go ahead and divide both sides by 1 minus i to the nth. That's basically going to give us 1 on the right hand side, which is a good thing. Now, obviously 1 minus i will never be 0 because i does not equal 1. As you know, i squared equals negative 1. Don't forget that. Very important. And now since I have the same exponent, can I just go ahead and write this as 1 plus i divided by 1 minus i and that quantity all the way to the power n. Can I do that? Yes, absolutely. Now, one thing to keep in mind, if you just leave it like that and raise both sides to the power 1 over n, let's just think real here, that would be, we would be getting something like this, okay? And then this would lead to something interesting. But that's not what we're supposed to do. We should not lose n because, come on, we're trying to solve for n. We shouldn't get rid of it, right? That wouldn't be good. So instead, here's what we're going to do. We're going to raise both sides to the power 1 over n, but complexify 1. Because in this case, when I say to the power 1 over n, so in other words, I can kind of do this. Let me raise this to the power 1 over n, and that'll just clear the n here, because n times 1 over n is just going to be 1, right? Like this. But this means the nth roots of 1, which is also called nth roots of unity. Okay, because one can be expressed in so many ways in the complex world. So, instead of one, we're going to replace it with this. How do you complexify one? You can write it as e to the power 2 pi ki. Now, k is an integer. I could use an n, but that would be confusing because we have already have an n, which probably doesn't have to be an integer even, right? We'll find out. But then I raise it to the power 1 over n. And that gives us e to the power 2 pi ki divided by n. Awesome. Now, I have a constant expression on the left-hand side, which is 1 plus i over 1 minus i. And then I have the nth roots of unity on the right-hand side. What do you do next? Let's just look at some particular values of k, shall we? For example, if k is equal to 0, then 1 plus i over 1 minus i is just going to equal, and you can just directly use this, forget about the term in the middle, is going to be e to the power 0 over n. n is not 0. Obviously, you don't want it to be 0, right? Because then you would have 1 over 1, or 1 equals 1. I guess that's not very interesting, is it? Well, that is a solution, but anyways. So you're going to set this equal to 1. And from here, we get 1 plus i equals 1 minus i. 1 cancels out i equals negative i, or if you just divide both sides by i, 1 equals negative 1. Is that true? No, I don't think so. Or i equals negative i is not even true. Or you can do put the i's on the same side and 2i equals 0, i equals 0. Haha, -ha. that's not true, obviously. This is all false. You can't do that. So, no solution from here. Too bad k equals 0 is not going to work. What happens if k is equal to 1? Let's find out. If k is equal to 1, then we can kind of write it as follows. 1 plus i divided by 1 minus i equals e to the power 2 pi i n, i over n, sorry about that. And then from here we can solve for n, hopefully, right? How do you solve for n though? Well, we can kind of do this, cross multiply, and then write the 1 minus i first, and then e to the power 2 pi i over n. And just remember, Euler's formula, it's beautiful, right? e to the i theta is cosine theta, plus i sine theta. Could we solve this problem without using that formula? Probably, 
but I'd like to use this method because I think this is really cool. So I'm going to go ahead and turn the right hand side to 1 minus i, multiply by cosine, and notice that in this case this is the theta, which is multiplied by i, cosine of 2 pi over n, plus i times sine of 2 pi over n, thanks to Euler. Now, in this equation, again, don't divide by 1 minus i because that's going to put you back to square 1. Instead, let's just distribute because it's fun, right? <laughs> let's find out. So 1 multiplied by the whole thing is just going to be the same thing. So let's just copy that. And then when you multiply by negative i, you're going to distribute like this and like that. You're going to get minus i times cosine of 2 pi over n. And then i times negative i is negative i squared, which is positive 1 plus sine of 2 pi over n. Great. We have complex numbers on both sides, so we can compare them, right? They're equal. So here's how we can do it. Let's put the real parts together. We have cosine of 2 pi over n plus sine of 2 pi over n. And then for the imaginary part, we have the i multiplied by the quantity sine of 2 pi over n minus cosine of 2 pi over n. Great. Now we have 1 plus i on the left hand side, so the real and imaginary parts are equal, which means we have to have the same situation on the right hand side. So this is supposed to be 1, and this is supposed to be 1. And that gives us a beautiful, beautiful system. Let's go ahead and take a look at it. Cosine of 2 pi over n plus sine of 2 pi over n. Also consider the fact that sine and cosine cannot exceed 1 if, of course, 2 pi over n is real. And it's, that's actually real because i is not real. Anyways, I hope that makes sense. Here, uh, basically, we can add these equations, get rid of the cosine, and end up with 2 sine, and then equals to 2. So from here, we get sine of 2 pi over n. By the way, I hope you forgive me for not putting this in parentheses, but I'll do it once maybe. It's equal to 1. Now, sine of which angle is equal to 1? When you think about it on the unit circle, you're going to realize, hey, this is where sine is 1. There's only one angle, and that's a very special angle for which sine is equal to 1. Okay? So far, so good. Now, let's see what we can set this equal to. Sine of 2 pi over n equals, what am I writing at this point? Sine of pi over 2, but instead we can do the following. Instead of doing that, let's just focus on this. 2 pi over n needs to be pi over 2 because that's what it is. But we can also add, we're allowed to add, multiples of 2 pi. Awesome. A lot of pi's. Let's get rid of them. Divide everything by pi. You get 2 over n equals 1 half plus 2m. Remember, m is also an integer, just like the k, right? Did we use a k? I think so. But we're not sure about n. Anyways, let's go to make a common denominator. Crisscross applesauce, we get 4m plus 1. I think since our goal is to solve for n, let's do it directly. From here, n becomes 4 over 4m plus 1. Again, m is an integer, which is kind of interesting, right? But well, let's leave it at that. I want to show you an alternative approach. When we get here, Actually, you didn't really have to go through all this pain, but, you know, no pain, no gain. So I wanted to show you the painful method first. When you simplify this, like multiplying by the conjugate, you're going to realize, hey, I get a 2i in the numerator and a 2 at the bottom. So this is actually i. You probably guessed it too, because you can factor out an i here and you'll be getting 1 minus i. Anyways, to keep a long story short again, I will replace the whole thing inside the parentheses with i. And that gives me a super duper beautiful equation, i to the power n equals 1. You probably know that i to the fourth power is 1. So any multiple of 4 as an integer would work. So n equals 4k if k is an integer. But the question is, with my first approach, n was something like that. So the question is, can n be 4 over 4m plus 1? Uh, I just replaced... No, I didn't replace anything. Okay. Now, the good thing about this is that 4m plus 1 always leaves a remainder of 1 when divided by 4. And this is a 4, so they'll never have a common factor. Um, can we use uh, 4m plus 3 as well? I guess. But when you replace i with that, remember the discussion was, can this be the power? You can kind of write it as i to the fourth power and then to the power 
1 over 4n plus 1, but this is 1, 1 to the power of this, and any power of 1 is 1, right? Well, right and wrong, because there are other roots of 1 that are not 1. <laughs> so, anyways, this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.